Hi everyone, uh, right now we are on the topic of uh, acoustic emission testing and in uh, last couple of lectures uh, we have already discussed about the basic principle and few other aspects about uh, this particular technique. And in the previous lecture we have seen two effects, uh, Kaiser and Felicity effects which talk about the relationship between the previous loading history and the acoustic emission events. And then we also learned how these two particular effects uh, indicate about uh, presence of active defects uh, when they develop uh, inside a structure in a given interval. Okay. And then we also uh, just started this uh, uh, signal parameters and two of the parameters we discussed in the last class if you remember. So, this is uh, what we started about uh, the signal parameters and today we will continue on this and uh, learn about the other parameters. Okay. So, if you remember I told I, I, I told you uh, that uh, uh, the first thing that you need to do you need to define this uh, threshold and above this threshold uh, whatever signal you see uh, that is taken as an actual uh, acoustic emission signal and below this uh, threshold whatever you get that is considered as noise. Okay. So, that is the first thing which is done. This uh, threshold is user defined based upon uh, the experience of the user or based upon the kind of part uh, you have or the kind of defects you are expecting and so on. Okay. And the first of the parameters uh, which was uh, counts, we discussed this uh, in the previous class, it is nothing but the number of uh, crossings or the number of excursion that you see above the threshold. Okay. So, this is primarily this peaks that you have uh, which are above the threshold and count uh, is a parameter which will uh, depend on uh, certain other aspects that also we have discussed. And the second parameter is known as the amplitude or the peak amplitude. Okay. So, that means the maximum signal that you have which is this one. Now, if you uh, consider the time uh, which is elapsed between uh, the first crossing and the last uh, threshold crossing, that means the time above the threshold, if you consider that, that particular time interval is known as duration. So, this is another parameter. duration which is indicated by D. So, as I said this is uh, time elapsed above the threshold so that means uh, this is the time difference between the first threshold crossing and the last one. As we have already indicated in the diagram. Okay. Uh, this uh, parameter duration this is quite useful uh, while you are doing uh, acoustic emission testing and it uh, depends on uh, duration depends on uh, the magnitude of the acoustic uh, source.
and it also depends on the frequency of the source. And as I said, uh, this is a very useful parameters which can be used uh, to do a uh, few things uh, while doing acoustic emission testing. For example, uh, this parameter can be used to filter out the noise. Because uh, duration uh, can be used uh, to identify different types of uh, emission. And as a result, uh, this can be used uh, to identify noise that means emissions which are coming out from some other source which are not related to the defect. Okay. And hence uh, useful for filtering noise. The next one uh, that we have is known as uh, rise time, which is written as R. And this is the time interval uh, between the first uh, threshold crossing and the peak. So, this is the rise time. So, this particular uh, parameter is uh, related to uh, the propagation of uh, the acoustic waves uh, between the source and the sensor. And hence, uh, this can be used uh, to qualify uh, the emissions, to qualify the signal and as a result, this can also be used as a criteria to filter out noise. Okay. So, these are uh, some of the parameters uh, of the acoustic emission signal and as uh, you could see uh, many of these parameters are quite useful, uh, particularly uh, identifying the signal whether it is coming out from actual acoustic emission events or not and uh, filter out the noise which may uh, come from some other sources which are not related to defect. Okay. So, we will talk about that uh, little later as to how uh, some of this parameter or at least one of these parameters can be used to filter out the noise from the uh, emission signal. But there is one more parameter uh, which will indicate uh, uh, about uh, the size of the source or the energy of the source and uh, this is uh, known as
marks and if you expand this, uh, this stands for measured area under the rectified signal envelope. Okay, so, what you do in order to get this parameter that signal that you have you rectify it, okay. you uh, smoothen it get a smooth uh, signal out of it by rectifying it and if you uh, measure the area under that uh, rectified uh, signal that will uh, give you uh, this parameter which is related to the energy in the signal. Okay. So, that means, if you have a signal like this, this has to be first uh, rectified. So, you need to make it smooth like this. And now, if you uh, measure the area under this uh, rectified signal, this is the parameter Mars. Okay. So, this uh, tells you about uh, the energy levels uh, in the acoustic emission signal. So, this is also a measure of uh, the signal strength. And this particular parameter is uh, sensitive to duration. And the peak amplitude or the amplitude but it uh, does not take into account uh, the user defined threshold and uh, the operating frequency. Okay, so, these are uh, the different parameters uh, with regard to the acoustic emission signal. Now, uh, since we have learned about the basic principle, uh, the signal and the other aspects. So, now we can go ahead and see uh, the measurement system and the data how it is displayed and how the defects are interpreted. Okay. So, if you talk about the measurement system. The major component here is the sensor, which can convert these uh, elastic stress waves, uh, which are coming out from the sample into an electrical signal, uh, which can be shown on the display and can be interpreted in terms of a defect. Okay. So, that is the main component here and of course, you have that electronic circuit and other things, uh, the amplifiers and so on in order to uh, amplify the signal and characterize it and finally, display it. So, the sensor uh, here also is uh, 
made of a piezoelectric element like what you have uh, uh, in an ultrasonic uh, transducer. So, this lead zirconate uh, titanate uh, piezoelectric elements can be used uh, in these sensors. So, first uh, you collect the signal uh, by the sensor which is uh, sent into a pre amplifier first. and then uh, through the uh, electronics uh, in the system uh, you characterize the signal that means you identify the signal and see the quality of it whether it is coming out from actual acoustic emission events or there are a lot of noise and things like that. So, that is called the characterization of the signal. And then uh, finally, you uh, send it to the display system either through a single channel or you can also send it through multiple channels uh, depending on what kind of sources you have, how many uh, acoustic emission events is being picked up uh, by the sensor and so on. Okay. So, for a particular uh, defect or for a particular acoustic emission event, you can collect a number of heat you can collect a number of signals and you can send them through multiple channels to the display system which will finally uh, display the signal and uh, give you an indication about uh, the defects and damage inside the component. Okay, so, these are the main components uh, of an AE uh, test equipment and now we will see uh, how the data is displayed, how it is uh, collected we have uh, seen it before also it is through uh, the piezoelectric sensor which will convert these uh, uh, stress waves uh, into an electrical signal that is what uh, will be collected and characterized and then finally, it will be displayed. Okay. So, in order to uh, characterize the defects or in order to uh, know about the presence of defects, we need to see what kind of display we have and how this uh, display is interpreted in terms of the presence of defects. Okay. So, let us see that now. So, this data can be displayed in uh, various forms. Uh, for example, uh, you can take the counts. So, this is uh, the parameter that we have already talked about or you can also uh, take the energy. This also we have seen how it is uh, obtained uh, from the signal and uh, then plot it. Uh, against time. Okay. So, if you uh, see the plot, it will look like this. So, as the time increases, uh, the emissions are also supposed to increase like this. Okay. Uh, sometime a, a heat uh, system is also uh, used and by heat we mean a signal which is above the threshold. Okay, so, whenever you uh, count the signal uh, it is taken as a heat if it is above the threshold and if it is uh, below the threshold then it will be uh, counted as a noise. Okay. So, this uh, number of heats uh, will also give you the count or the count rate 
And in fact, uh, instead of uh, plotting count versus time, if you take the uh, count rate, uh, that is a, a better representation of uh, uh, of the data, because then it will tell, tell you at a particular instant what is going on uh, inside the component. Okay. So, this is over a period of time. So, this is kind of uh, accumulative. But if you want to know uh, the instantaneous uh, results or what is happening at a given instance, then uh, you need to uh, better plot it in terms of the count rate. or energy rate. So, as I said then you would be able to know that in a given instance at a given time uh, how much acoustic emission events or acoustic emission signals are coming out. Okay. So, in some other instant uh, you could have a signal like this, like this or like this and sometime you may notice lot of uh, signal coming out. So, this would indicate that at this particular instance lot of acoustic emission events are occurring inside the sample that means something must be going inside the sample. Okay. So, that is how if you plot the data in terms of the count rate it provides you uh, the instantaneous picture. Then the data can also be plotted as a function of load because load is one of the major parameter as we have talked about before uh, which is responsible for uh, generating this uh, acoustic emissions. So, you can plot this uh, counts again or the energy as a function of load okay. and uh, this will give you a, a picture about uh, the occurrence of uh, acoustic emission events uh, simply by looking at the curve itself uh, you would be able to know uh, whether you have lot of emissions uh, happening or you have you know lower amount of emission happening. That means, if you look at the slope of the curve that itself would uh, indicate uh, what kind of damage uh, is occurring uh, inside the component. So, you might have a curve like this which is uh, very stiff and then uh, on the other hand uh, you could have a curve like this. Okay. So, in one case uh, it is very stiff the slope is very high and in the other case it is gradual the slope is lower. Okay. So, when you have this kind of uh, gradual increase uh, in the uh, emission uh, with respect to the load, then that would indicate uh, that the structure is good, uh, it is not damaged. On the other hand, uh, if you see that uh, if you increase the load a bit, you are getting lot of emissions and as you keep increasing the load, uh, more and more emissions are coming out at a very high rate, then that would indicate uh, a bad structure or a damaged structure. Okay. So, uh, this is how uh, looking at the slope itself you would be uh, able to know uh, whether the uh, structure is damaged or not. Okay. Then uh, you can use the amplitude also because this is again uh, directly related to the size of the source. So, this uh, signal amplitude can also be used uh, as a parameter to have a display and then uh, you can uh, you know characterize it and uh, find out about the indications of uh, the defects and damage inside the structure. So, this amplitude uh, can be plotted in two ways. One is uh, 
you see how many hits are there uh, with a particular amplitude. So, let us say this is uh, the amplitude and the y axis uh, is the number of hits. Okay. So, in one case you could uh, plot uh, to see uh, how many hits you have with a given amplitude like this. Okay. So, for this particular amplitude this many hits you have. Okay. So, like that. So, you will have uh, different number of hits with uh, different amplitudes like this and you plot it as a function of the amplitude. Okay, like this. So, this kind of uh, plot uh, when you uh, see the uh, hits uh, with a given amplitude is known as a differential plot. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if you see how many hits are there above a particular amplitude, then that kind of plot uh, is known as a cumulative plot. Okay. So, let us say you have uh, uh, different numbers of heat So, then you see uh, how many heats are exceeding a particular amplitude. So, that curve will look like this. So, if you see for example, above this uh, amplitude how many uh, are there, then above uh, this amplitude how many are there and so on. Okay. So, if you uh, plot it in this fashion where you see uh, number of heats exceeding a particular amplitude, then uh, this will be known as a cumulative plot. Okay, so, these are the two different types of plot when you use the amplitude uh, to display the data. Okay. And uh, how you get an idea about uh, the defects or damage uh, in this particular case is, if you see uh, number of hits at uh, higher amplitude, so if you see an increase in the number of hits with uh, high amplitude. then that will indicate uh, a damage uh, during the loading. Okay. Okay, so, depending on this whether you are getting a large number of hits with the high amplitude or you are getting uh, in a lower amplitude hits on larger number based upon that uh, you would be able to take a call whether uh, some kind of damage has happened to the structure or not uh, when it is loaded. Okay. So, this is how uh, the data is uh, presented, the data is displayed in different forms in case of acoustic emission testing. Okay. And with this I am going to stop here today and uh, we will again uh, meet in the uh, next class and we will uh, see uh, uh, some other aspects also and with that uh, we can close uh, this particular topic as well. Okay. So, I will stop here today, I will see you next time. Thank you.